Hello, we welcome our students. This is Ali, and I send one another Friday question. So, this Friday's question is about the lid technique. It was a question online about uh, what is the lid technique and why is it useful. And I figured we'll just spend a little bit of time talking about a clinical case that I just finished and uh, describe the lid technique for you guys again. Okay, the lid technique is a technique that I described back in 2008 after the introduction of the, this uh, premixed biceramic material, the injectable uh, premixed biceramic uh, syringable material, which is a nanoparticular um, biceramic, uh, allows for uh, the material to be injected through a fairly thin uh, nozzle syringe. And also the development later of the putty material, which is a, a heavier body material, allowed the combination of these two materials to provide the injection of the, of the material into a retrofilling followed by the covering and protection of the light body material for the time period that it takes for it to set. And this technique uh, is what I call the lid technique because the function of the putty material is to simply protect the light body material that gets injected into the retro preparation for its four hour of setting time. So um, I, I have a clinical case that I want to describe with you. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at this clinical case first. This maxillary central incisor was referred to my office for apicolectomy, an old cast postnatal core and root canals present, as well as a sinus tract and an apical lesion in this tooth. You can see under the microscope the sinus tract present right around the apical area of this tooth, and usually four teeth with crowns where there's no probing present. I sometimes prefer to do a submarginal incision because it's both quicker as well as it doesn't cause any recession that could potentially expose the uh, crown's margins. So here are quickly reflected tissues exposing the apical area. You can see there is a granuloma right over the root on the buccal aspect of the tooth. You could use a spoon, but I usually remove the soft tissue of granuloma with a round burr uh, pretty quickly. I'm not removing the bone here, only removing the granuloma to expose the uh, heart tissue underneath there, and you can see the buccal aspect of the root. Uh, interestingly, the lesion was on the buccal aspect of the root. There's also a separate lesion right at the apex where I'm currently drilling to create the osteotomy right at the apical area for the apicoectomy. So here you can see the apical lesion that was present on the radiograph, and we can see clearly as well with this extension that goes all the way to the buccal aspect, which at higher magnification shows to be because of a lateral canal directly in that portion of the root. Of course, the lateral canal is a uh, exit route for the bacteria that's inside the root. And now I'm switching to this uh, burr called the Lindemann burr, which is an awesome burr for uh, cutting a perpendicular portion of the apex and creating um, the apicoectomy platform for the retro preparation. Now, using a micro mirror, we can see the gutta percha uh, in, uh, in the middle of the root and use a little bit of aluminum chloride here just in the apical area to get some uh, hemostasis. Once some hemostasis is achieved, I now proceed to use the uh, retro preparation tip on my um, ultrasonic and uh, proceed to. Um, prepare three millimeters or sometimes longer down the root axis. And what's interesting is you can see as I'm going up and down, you can see some material debris being pushed out of the lateral canal that is um, showing the connection between the lateral canal and the main canal and the reason why this lesion was popping also laterally as well as apically. So the apical area is prepared now, and I look uh, with a micro mirror, I see still a little bit of gutta percha lift on the buccal aspect of the preparation, which is inside the canal. So I just angle the tip a little bit uh, correctly to clean that little uh, lip of gutta percha on the buccal aspect, and now that is removed. And now I proceed to prepare the lateral canal. I could use even a straight ultrasonic, because in this case we have straight access to this area, but you could also just use the same uh, surgical retrofilling tip and orient it correctly so that you can go 
uh, through the lateral canal. At this point now, I kind of dry the apical and the lateral canal area. I have reflection, and here is the lid technique, which involves the injection of the flowable and uh, either the sealer or RRM syringable by ceramic, which you can see actually injects out through the side of the lateral canal after I inject at the apex, and then I add just a tiny bit more and go on very quickly immediately thereafter to add the putty material, which acts as a sealing barrier uh, because this is a fast set putty, goes over the syringable material, material and seals the very surface of the retro preparation. It doesn't have to be a cone. You don't have to put it all the way down to the inside the retro preparation. The main seal comes from the uh, injectable material and the putty's function is to just seal the surface and you can see uh, once it's placed you could use a little bit of hydro carving with water uh, blast not directly over the retro preparation but on the sides at the um, where the flash is present alternatively you can also use this micro brush and the micro brush bristles will just kind of remove and dislodge any of the attached flash with the putty material which you then proceed to wash out with um, water so this is a very quick and this is actually basically unedited and live it shows you how quickly I managed to fill using this lid technique with the injectable syringable bioceramic and the facet putty material as a barrier to very quickly uh, f do the uh, retrofilling in both of these cases. And here is the final radiograph that shows the retrofilling material at the apex as well as the uh, filling of the lateral canal completed using the lid technique very, very efficiently. Okay, as you saw, the lid technique is a fairly efficient method of retrofilling. So once you have a retro preparation, whether it's at the apex or it's a perf repair, or as you saw in this particular case, the uh, repair of a lateral canal uh, that was fairly large, you just prepare it, and as far as long as the preparation is thick enough so that you can at least get like a size 30, 23 gauge uh, needle through it, you'd be able to inject this uh, injectable bioceramic which would be either the sealer or the RRM syringable into the retro preparation. And then all you need to do is to just protect the surface for, a, um, uh, for the four hours it takes for it to set. And that could be best done using the putty fast set um, by ceramic. So these are techniques and materials that we have developed uh, here at Rewaldendo over the past uh, decade and that are, are helping make endodontics a little bit uh, more efficient and certainly more predictable as well since we all know by ceramics uh, revolution has been uh, really helpful to us as clinicians over the past couple of decades and MTA being the first by ceramic we have a ton of research to show how the material helps so this particular fo formulation of the same by ceramic being the BC putty and the sealer are just helping make the application of bioceramics a little bit more efficient and simpler to use clinically. And I hope these techniques and materials can uh, help you and your patients save more teeth.